Hey, it's the Wide World of International Art Alliance. I've got my friends here from all over the world. I've got Laura in the United Kingdom and I... Rose in British Columbia and Cheryl in Australia and Denise in Quebec, Canada and Stephanie in Toronto, Canada. And I'm Ross in Los Angeles, United States of America. And we're the International Art Alliance, and we're doing the Palimpsest Project in which we send live actual pieces of art through freight, through mail, through parcel services to each other so we can scrape and roughen them up and rework them and put something else on there and make our own stamp and hello to everybody else. Yeah, man. So we've got a lot to cover today. Just like we travel around the world and we send our pieces to travel around the world, sometimes we travel. In fact, a few of us travel fairly extensively, um, either within our own countries or internationally. And well, when I travel, I get um, my gut stops. So like, that's a thing. But um, some people get like super, super, super inspired when they travel and they see other things. and. Well, how about you guys? You know, you, you, you're all a bunch of travelers. What do you, what do you, a sec. what do you mean your gut stops? Oh, it's called, <laughs> <laughs> here's too much information. Okay, share. <laughs> I'm information hungry. I thought I could just skip right by that. Not with you. Nope. Uh, it's called mm -hmm. um, travel. What's it called? Travel induced constipation. Oh, <laughs> You change your location oh. and things just kind of stop up. And, you know, sometimes when we're traveling uh, in that our world gets disrupted in some kind of way, the change in water, the change in light, the change in everything else, you know, the same can happen creatively or we just like hit it, right? Like everything hits right and we are right on it. And, oh my God, I love this place. I can, I get so many ideas when I'm here. The people look different. The light is different. The colors are different. So um, I know Cheryl, Thanks when you share. travel around, you travel often by like bicycle and uh, other ways, and and you actually draw, and I think maybe paint when you're when you're on your way. How does how does traveling inform your art practice? Yeah, it's great. Okay, good. I love being. Um, yeah, I'm 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 great to go anywhere. I love. <laughs> The last time when um, we, we were biking, um, we travelled around the Air Peninsula, which is a very flat sort of an area, and it's right down in the, the um, I suppose, the Australian Bight. Um, but the interesting thing was that there are all these jetties, all these just jetties everywhere, so we, we just thought it was a jetty tour. <laughs> so I was just painting these incredible jetties that just kept going out into the water, which was really nice, these really sort of um, very sort of slow slow um places because very few people live down there <laughs> um and and so that was really good so i was able to uh paint all the jetties and also it's really interesting because there's a place down there oh my god it's i've forgotten what it's called but it's where they have the great white um shark gum you can go diving with the great whites and that's really interesting because the whole town is just got sharks everywhere <laughs> Did you did you draw sharks? Well, it was just so much fun at Port Lincoln. That's right. Yeah, but I'm just saying the whole town had like shark images. If you get my drift, like everywhere where you were, it was just like shark, 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 shark. <laughs> and I often I I love that also um, for the actual making art, but also it's always so interesting when you travel for the art that happens to be in places on silos. You know, there's a tradition in Australia that there's a lot of um, massive sort of art on the back of silos and towns have gotten together to paint their stories on silos hmm. and that's always interesting yeah so I mean the thing is is that Australia is really really barren um, people I don't think really get that when you're used to Europe and um, perhaps USA but we just have sort of like huge areas when I leave the coast there's nothing <laughs> I mean, there's nothing for day, days. <laughs> it's not like we, <laughs> it's just. Do you ever draw that stuff, Cheryl? Do you ever paint that? I haven't actually. Um, 
Oh, look, I, I have. I've done the Flinders Ranges and stuff when I was a lot younger. But at the moment, because we've had that, um, you know, that world plague, the last few <laughs> years we've all been stuck a little bit. And I've been on, I've, I've done a few bike tours, but I haven't really gotten out. I mean, um, you know, for a while. But um, I'd love, I, that, that, that is on my bucket list to do a little bit more sort of like traveling and painting. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Laura, you've spent time in, you know, many beautiful European countries. When you go to these places, do you find that your painting also changes, your drawing changes, your thinking changes? No, I, I, I don't think that, that my painting changed. Um, I, I think that when I'm traveling, probably I, um, uh, I got inspiration and I uh, start to build some knowing sense inside me. Um, I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't think that, re um, I don't know how to, uh, how to explain because uh, when I'm traveling, traveling affect me in two ways, uh, the, the, the bad way and good way. The good way is the inspiration. What I know traveling, as you said, uh, I, I, I travel, travel a lot in Europe and uh, it's a full of art uh, uh, everywhere. Also uh, in Italy, <laughs> Italy, it's uh, mm -hmm. like a, a, a museum or open air. So, um, and you've got inspiration about it. Uh, but uh, the problem for me is that when I come back, uh, I need like uh, <laughs> time to re-enter re in the routine, uh, in uh, um, what I have to do every day. And I can see that uh, Denise said yes, but I'm so a mess. My mind is so <laughs> messy that it takes so long to, to restart everything. And uh, so probably I have to, the ideas of what I've known has to, uh, like uh, like uh, when there is the the storm, all the air, uh, the, the the water that comes, and then it needs to be quiet after when I, I'm I'm back. Uh, integration time. Yeah. Sorry. Integration time. Uh, see integration and restoring time. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, I find myself very, uh, real, um, yeah, the most difficult part is when I come back and, and I love travel, uh, traveling because it's uh, as something that I cannot do uh, all, all my life. I travel a lot, so uh, I cannot stop. But um, Probably is because I'm older now. <laughs> it's a difficult. <laughs> I have to recover for a, it, it takes longer <laughs> to recover. <laughs> right. Just carrying the bag sometimes. Yeah. Denise, yeah. is it is it more like when you get home or is it more when you're traveling? I mean, you've talked before about you take all these pictures, you do a lot of research. Um, your 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 whole practice is about travel and inspiration and living somewhere. And then, what happens when you get home? What about when you travel for pleasure? Like when you're not moving, you're not actually <laughs> like going to move there. What what's that like for you? I uh, I'm always working in some some shape or form. I cannot not take photographs when I travel. I, even when I travel for pleasure, I still feel compelled to bring my camera everywhere and take photographs and, and do those things. Um, my, my main source of inspiration is, is cities though. So when I travel somewhere where there's less um, cities, I still bring my camera and take photos everywhere. So that really doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make a difference. <laughs> I just feel compelled to cover, like to capture every inch of every place I ever go to. That's just my thing. Um, but when I'm in a city, I will specifically, I know that these are photos that I'm going to be using. So when I, for example, walk by a building, I'm like, oh, this is a really cool building. I will specifically go out of the way to, to walk around it, to, to photograph it from multiple angles, because I know I want to maybe use it in a, in a, in a painting. So I need different angles of that painting 
Um, or I'll go chasing all the streetcars around the city because I really love the roads. So I'm a joy to travel so, with, really. Like I'm, I'm just standing so what, still on every corner to photograph every little <laughs> fire hydrant and and whatever. Oh and then everybody else is like over there and like, where did Denise go? Oh, she's over there. <laughs> That's like going for a walk with me, and I have to stop and pick leaves off the ground. Yep. <laughs> I can just so what imagine. What do you have? Hmm? What are your cameras? What cameras do you have? Uh, I you, currently only use? have one. I have a, a Canon D seventy forty. Okay, 50, 50, 70, 70, So it's not full frame. It's not a full frame. That would be medium frame. I think. I think yeah, it's medium. medium frame. Yeah, I have, I have several lenses. Yeah. I, I re well recently I when I was in uh, Japan. Oh, they have a really good like second hand um, uh, store system where everything just looks like new because Japanese people are very like um, good about keeping their stuff really nice. So I bought a, a wide angle lens for it, which I um, managed to drop in an asset lake in New Zealand when I was there. So an I had asset a second lake. one. An wow. asset lake, yeah. As you do as one does. So How does travel affect your work? <laughs> 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 so then i bought a second second hand one so now i still have a wide angle lens which is really great when you want to photograph cities yeah oh. yeah <laughs> so that was <laughs> big in acid lake, acid lake. <laughs> a rare story yeah or likely, or likely story maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is very unique. you're trying to come up with an excuse yeah. Sorry, right. my, my lens fell in an acid lake. Yeah, I felt really, really bad. I still feel bad about it when I think about it. Oh. And my, my husband still teases me about it. <laughs> yeah, how much? Yeah, it'd be interesting to know. I was just thinking, how much was the lens? Come on, uh, just to it. rub it in a little bit, Sean. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. 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 it was about $300. Yeah. So. Oh. Okay, that's all right. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, well, it was secondhand, right. so... Yeah, 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 I knew that, but I'm just saying... Because I, I know that my daughter went through a whole stage of you know, losing and bashing up cameras. Yeah. And hers was a full frame, a deep, deep you know, like the top Ooh. of the line. And oh, yeah, yeah. That does it yeah. But it got stolen. Oh, I knew it would, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Rose, when when you go someplace, do you look beforehand at what kind of, do you do like an encyclopedic research about what you're going to encounter in nature before you get there? Or is your... Honest uh, Ross, yeah. I, I, most of the time I try to um, connect with human beings who live in that area, who are familiar or, or experts or guides or naturalists. Mm. And I'm a member of a, quite a number of naturalist groups. So there's, I mean, naturalists, all we do is identify bugs and plants. <laughs> That's our thing, right? It's like, oh, what's this? It was somebody puts up a picture and goes, oh, I found this in, in this location. What do you think this is? And everybody jumps in and goes, oh, it's this kind of bug. Or no, it's a fungi. No, it's a lichen. <laughs> so there's always that kind of going on in the background. So I, I try to have somebody who is familiar with the the plant, you know, plants of their region who can give me some insight to be honest with you it helps a lot because mm -hmm. plant id apps are unreliable they're just no they don't work do they? they're unreliable so it it's very frustrating to rely on a plant id app the ai is not as i as we <laughs> <are>. <laughs> it's, it's so far it's just more artificial than intelligent so um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I try to inform myself like Denise does some research, you know, but I don't, you know, I don't rely on books. I rely on um, um, what it, in, indigenous knowledge, right? People who live in that place mm -hmm. and their, their knowledge of the place. I love and, that because that really describes how it's always been done, doesn't it? You know, well, it's like and, a person it's, to person transmission of information and it, technology. It's technology. Yeah, it's it's in, it's indigenous technology. And, um, you know, for me, plants are really powerful because without plants, we would have nothing. I mean, we wouldn't have our toes, we wouldn't have anything made of wood. Adina, 
dinner, dinner. medicine, <laughs> no, um, co cosmetics. It, it just everything that we do are pigments that we love. You know, a lot of them come from plants minerals it's all it's all natural stuff so um for me that connection with the human being in the in the biophilia picture is quite important i mean it, originally for me it comes from uh my grandmother who was from trinidad herself um you know just healing me with plant medicine healing the family with plant medicine just as a natural part of life process mm. You know, oh, I have a little tummy ache or, oh, I've got this or you have the flu and it would be bay rum or something made with plants that she nurtured us with. So that human connection with the plants is a big part of why I do what I do. And so traveling is fun because, of course, there's different plants when you go to a different place. And mm. if you're um, a responsible bot botanical artist, you do not take one plant from an, one place to another because it's dangerous and you can bring pests. And like Cheryl said, you know, if we bring plants from North America to Australia, we could like bring something that just destroys the balance of harmony of one little thing. And then you never know what's going to happen. So, oh gosh, we have our quarantine rules are so strict. Yeah, and they need to be. They should yeah. be. Mm. And it helps to protect our pollinators, mm. you know, and, and things that are important to me. So I love to work with teak leaves. Teak leaves, when you print teak leaves, oh, you get colors maroon, you get burgundy, you get gold. You just get all these really strong, beautiful, fast colors. But of course, teak doesn't grow in North America. So mm. it's kind of like a special thing that I can only do. And I wasn't able to do it in Trinidad this year because it was dry season and it wasn't the right time. So it's just traveling is, um, it's kind of fundamental to the work a lot of botanical artists do actually. A lot of botanical artists travel to go and learn indigenous knowledge about natural dyeing. A lot of people go to a Oaxaca in Mexico um, because of the ancient traditional dyeing technology available there. A lot of people go to India. They go to Japan mm. to mm. learn indigo. Mm. Mm. There are um, just like different traditions in the within the field that are just kind of almost exciting because they hold all this legacy and history and culture uh around where they come from like the indigo there's so much cultural uh, i mean like denise knows when you spend you go to japan indigo is like a, an important thing like people still really have a, a reverence for mm. it mm. yeah and you know and it's and it's kind of like when you travel you get to have a taste of what it means to people more than just you know what it looks like hmm. so hmm. for me yes that touches me deeply and i also do the same thing as you in a sense traveling affects my body i i am a person who lives with a dis disabling condition a chronic condition so when i travel it's um what's the word it's a victory hmm. <laughs> hmm. It, it's it's a challenge it's a physical challenge so I, I have a little bit of the same thing, Ross, where my body changes when I travel. My body gets affected. So I, I turn into a bit of a warrior and I have to kind of push through. That's you all over the place, Rose. You're always, you're always uh, making, the, making the most of the situation, you know, for, for all, these, all these things. You know, I think, Denise, you received a box recently, a parcel. So I'm, I'm wondering about the package that you got, Denise. You received yes, something, right? I did. And I bet this package traveled so far and so wide. How did it hold up? It the did box. really this well. I'm actually not sure where it came box. from originally, but I know that it came from Stephanie this time around. And it looks good. That came from me. That came from you? 
I think so. That looks like the tape I use. No, no, no it, it came it, from it, Ross it, first. It came from Stephanie, and from Ross first before that. But I, I have seen sharp the tape before. On the box. Yeah, I think there's a couple of boxes that have the blue tape on it. Yeah, yeah. usually it's roses. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, the box, those corners still look pretty darn good, eh? They Amazing. really do. Yeah. They really do. Ooh. Look, it comes Amazing. with the foam already and the titanium plate in the front of the box. Yeah, these master pack boxes are, are really nice to have that sense of security. Cool. We're not worried about them. And aren't they easy just to put the work into? You don't have to like yeah. think about it. You just like kind of put it in, put a piece of glassine over it. Yeah, no fuss, no much. Absolutely. No fuss, no muss. This is cool. Stephanie, did you sign the back of it? I did. Yes, she did. There's two Good. signatures here now. Yay. You guys want to see? Yeah. No, please, we don't care. <laughs> Stephanie doesn't want to see. I don't want to see. Why? Why? Okay. Oh, this was this really ambiguous one. Oh, oh okay. So, cool. so we've got a fairy, have we? Fairy. Or, yeah. Is it a? It's a fairy. It's an lady. angel fairy. Okay. Did you also okay. do the the um, light, or did did you do that, Ross? Ross. Um, I think those are my those are my marks. This is really nice. I love the texture on that. What did you use? Wh which one? The on the light areas here. Oh, uh, soft pastel. pastel. Yeah. It looks really. Nice. I used a clear a clear gesso, and then I used a graphite and soft soft wow. pastel and a. The the two kinds textures of here are simply gorgeous. Yeah, they look. It looks amazing. Yeah, it's really beautiful. This is cool. If yeah, someone wants it. to change her face, it's fine. I was having a hard time with it because it's so small. I'm not used to painting. <laughs> <laughs> I know you need a lot of dexterity, don't you, to actually you when you're moving really tiny. You really do need yeah. some dexterity. It's it's easier to paint bigger. Good on you. Bigger. Yeah. Okay. I love how you did the wings too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna just do it a little closer. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Did you use um metallic ink, uh, metallic paints? No, I used, um, actually, yes, I did. I used yeah, acrylic pens, like acrylic, acrylic paint pens. Mm -hmm. um, and one of some of them were metallic. Yeah, metallic yeah. silver and metallic gold. Golden, nice. and I see gold and silver. Yeah. Sweet. Very cool. This painting is going in another direction. <laughs> so so we, every, we always ask each other, so Denise, do you have any ideas? Not a clue. <laughs> This one is similar to the one that Cheryl started, where mm. uh, at the time I opened it, I had not I had the not foggiest what I was going to do. I had no, I have no clue, which happened to the one that I that Cheryl started. But I worked on that one yesterday, and after reading the um, description and everything, I had a very very clear picture of what I was going to do. So oh, I have good. <laughs> Maybe this thing will happen. Yeah, <laughs> I have hope that I will figure it out. I'm sure you will. I hope so. I got two weeks, right? That's the challenge of the project. That's the challenge. It's like a game show. <laughs> I'm excited though. Two weeks. Come on down. Good. See okay. what you can do to this painting. Yeah. I'm gonna scratch it all out and I'm gonna start over. Yeah. You know what? Scratch her face out. Just do something on her face if you can. Fix her face. I couldn't get it. I was just, I was so annoyed with myself. I, I must have done it over like, well. I can already tell like, you that that annoying. is not going to happen because there's way too much space. <laughs> and also, I'm terrible with faces. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> that should be left to a portrait painter like Lara, maybe. Let's see. Put a thumbprint over her face. Where does it go to next? Uh, this is a very good question. Let me check. Because if you're not, I mean, I mean, you might that. go to Lara. It might be going to Lara. There is not paperwork that will tell me that. Okay. Maybe? There should be the checklist. Yeah, I don't see a checklist. Did you print the checklist? 
<laughs> You're in trouble again. Was there one? Was there one included? I don't remember if there was one included. Maybe it, I don't. I, I don't know I, if there was one included. I thought I had included everything. Did you? Oh, maybe you did. I, I, didn't I don't know. Maybe, I didn't check it down. Yeah, I'm in trouble again. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I'm in trouble again. <laughs> I'm batting a thousand today. You know, is it? Be the skate. It's you not in the, the bottom of the box. Note. I don't think so. Oh. I mean, I see. I see. Is there are other papers there. There no, are that's a, like here. a way bill or something. The way bill. Is. Oh my God, that's your is shopping that list. No. What's that doing here? <laughs> oh, here's your passport. Oh, that that belongs <laughs> with the other people. Oh, that's a different thing. Because that thing is still here. Yeah, it belongs with that painting. You know what? Maybe the checklist is in the other box too. Maybe the checklist. <laughs> no, because the checklist is not here. <laughs> Okay. That box, that box is over there. Okay. I don't know. You're going to give going to have a nervous breakdown. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Stephanie's going to have to clean your living room slash studio and find it. I'm just going to check. I'm just going to print a new checklist, people. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's going to happen. I didn't. I honestly didn't see a checklist. I didn't. Uh, but it might have been there. And because I've been just getting ready for the show, I may have. I don't know. It's okay. I'll check. Wow. I'll check here and You're see. But I think it's no, we just blame it on me. It's okay. It's all my fault. You're so all, you the conundrum. He's going to travel for an art show, right? Well, the 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 checklist is is the least important thing. So I'll just yeah. print a new checklist. It's fine. Okay. Uh, Where's your art show, Stephanie? Where are you showing? Ottawa. Is it the Ottawa. is it the famous Ottawa give to what is it called? Give to get art show? No, it's called the Sweet Affordable Art Fair with oh. Wall Candy. With Wall Candy. Oh art wall candy. Yeah, they do um they do a okay. fall show as well. It's called the Noir Show in Ottawa. Another art show. So you're cool. traveling too. I am traveling. Yes, I am traveling. And you know, I'm gonna be showing my work. On Saturday, it's going to be pouring rain, <laughs> and I'm going to be in a stable. So that'll smell nice. Anyway, <laughs> oh no, in a stable. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> they're going to be like horses in stables. We're all in stables, which is kind of cool. Um, and I, I like the fact that I don't have to lug my tent hmm. and set up, and you know the pool noodles, and like I like the fact that it's not going to be raining inside my tent. And, and there's um, the stables are covered, so that's good. Um, but you know, what a drag! I just saw that, and then it's going to be raining some of the day Sunday, and then it's going to be sunny. Mm. Anyway, mm. it's all right. Maybe I'll make better. the best of it. Then pictures. We want to see pictures of your setup. Okay, maybe I will. Yeah, may, maybe yeah. maybe people will stay inside because they don't want to go out in the rain. I, I bought I, I bought a um, yeah. They'll go in. They'll stay inside. They'll come like that once. Because you were stuck because of the rain. Yeah, because our hotel oh, was sort of across the road or whatever, and so I was in this arcade, and so I spent over ten grand on a piece of jewelry. Just like, yeah, I think I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can remember that wow. every time I'm stuck in an art market, feeling so down. I'm gonna be like, "There's gonna be that just buy something." <laughs> it's gonna be the one person who spends ten thousand dollars on my work. <laughs> I mean, it does happen. I've done it. It's happened, all right? It's uh, happened. On impulse. So you were that spontaneous buyer Alexis was telling us about. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I haven't seen one of those before. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, Stephanie, the next time you're going to let us know how travel affected your work. <laughs> yeah. I will. And my white running Good shoes. <laughs> In ah. this table. Yeah, in this, in this table. table. I think I'll just bring my old blunt stones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> blunt stones will handle it well. Yeah. yeah. I can Let's actually see see probably what? where it needs to go to by looking at this chest. Probably gonna cut out in a minute, aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna yeah, cut probably. out any second. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who is going well, next to. It's going someplace, someplace around the world. And here we are, and we'll see you. You all next week around the world with our around the world project. We're around the world too. Come around the world with us. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.